everyone welcome to the bravo verse because bravo never sleep okay the amount of tea that we have from bravo every single day i think the beauty is the amount of shows that we have and the amount of bravo leverages there is always something going on am i right okay so we need to start talking about summer house summer house is giving so much this season finally finally after a horrible horrible last season they are giving us this season has been on point okay i thought that when when we learned about the drama between Lindsay and carl right i was like uh this is going to be so self-centered that it's going to be boring but like girl the layers you know the people the newbies the parties like Girl, this is why I, one of the reasons why I watch Summer House. It's literally because of the parties. I love to watch them party, and and the themes, you know. And I take like like ideas for my own parties, you know. Like I love it. That's why last season was so boring because I think they they throw like one party the, the whole the whole uh, season, you know. But this one, girl, the race cars, the aliens. The, I mean, they have been doing so much, and I really, really appreciate when they do that so this season has definitely been on point now of course Lindsay and carl are in the middle of everything and we need to talk a little bit about danielle Oliveira because she is, she of course uh is coming forward and trying to talk a little bit about the relationship of carl and Lindsay without being too involved you know like getting too involved what really um mean meant to her last season you know or, or literally almost destroy her relationship with Lindsay. you know so i think this season danielle was like you know what do you do you which honestly is what she should have done last season but i think last season she was like spiraling out of control and maybe it was because she was projecting for her from her own relationship i have no idea you know but like last season danielle was a mess this season she's like i'm not gonna say anything I'm just gonna let this shit play out. And girl, guess what? Danielle was right all along. Okay. Look, this is the thing. I have always liked Lindsay and, and Carl, you know, like I'm gonna miss that Lindsay Carlito, you know, friendship right there because I don't think there is gonna be a way that they're gonna be able to return to what it used to be after what Carl did. I mean, it will take, it will have to take a lot of maturity from both of them to be able to return to a friendship place. I have no idea how that is even gonna work out moving forward. You know, like next season, I have no idea, like are both of them gonna return next season? Like imagine like Ariana, you know, like she has to, like, Ariana Maddox has to like hang out with uh, Tom Sandoval. Now imagine someone breaking up your engagement on national TV and you have to like, be with them i mean I, I think that would be incredibly too much you know um so danielle you know she wasn't watching Happens live and she was talking a little bit you know about her experience and everything that is going on in there um one of the things that you know andy is asking her like are you kind of like enjoying the fact that you know you were right you know have you have that moment of like i told you so you know I feel that Danielle is such a good friend to Lindsay that she's like, look, I know that I was right, but I am not going to rub that into your face. I'm just going to be there to support Lindsay and to get her through all of this mess, which it really shows the real friendship that Danielle has with Lindsay so much. But yeah, I mean, she was 100% right. And I think like watching the whole story, I even talk about this last season. I like Lindsay and Carl together, but there was always something there that I, that kind of like didn't like, you know, and, and yes, it was fast. It was, I think it was too fast. I mean, a lot of us trying to like uh, justify it by saying like, well, I mean, maybe they have been in a relationship for a short time, short amount of time but they have been friends for over a decade. So like they already know each other. So maybe it's not that weird that they are like rushing into the whole getting married situation. 
but I have to say, I think that Lindsay is ready for commitment, ready for marriage, ready for kids, ready for everything. Carl is definitely not there. You know, she is, he still has like a lot of demons inside. He still have to deal with a lot of shit from inside. And I think he's definitely not ready to be in a relationship. So Danielle is pretty much saying like, girl, I told you so, but I am just not going to say absolutely anything, you know. Uh, Danielle also says that, you know, she's not going to be a slut chain when it comes to the whole situation that happened during the alien party with the balloon guy, which I agree a hundred percent. A lot of people were giving her like a hard time because, oh my God, like Gabby also like wanted the man. I'm like, Gabby didn't do anything. Okay. Like if Gabby wanted the balloon guy, she could have get the balloon guy, but Gabby is going through like, I don't know what is going through her mind. You know, and I think it's very much not about the balloon guy. You know, I think it's like uh, a self-esteem situation. I think she was like very, very uh, born in the past. And she really hasn't been able to like move forward from that relationship, you know, so or, or that trauma, you know. So I think that has to something to say. But like, I love when a woman is like, empower enough to say fuck it you know if i want to f a guy i am gonna f a guy i don't have to have a relationship with him i don't have to see him tomorrow i don't even have to know his name he could be the balloon guy forever and ever and do whatever she wants to do you know it takes honestly like a lot of power from especially from a woman to do that because a lot of women tend to like like destroy women that are that like free and powerful you know like they want to a slut shame her they want to call her names they want to be like oh my god how could you sleep with that guy like you just met him like girl men do that every single day so like who cares if she slept with him she give a he she did she gave a shit about the cameras getting naked like the whole thing you know and the, honestly the funny part is that guys do that all the time how many times we have seen all of these men on summer house or any of the other reality tv shows you know do all the things with random women no one says absolutely anything but when it is danielle or when it is a girl then oh my god how cool she like who gives a shit you know and she's like i will not be a slut shame i will do whatever it takes to take care of myself and i love that for danielle you know one person that is really surprising me this season is actually Paige. Because I'm usually not on Team Paige. She kind of like annoys me sometimes, you know. But I have been finding some kind of connection or relative, uh, not relativity, but like, like, I can, like relatable, you know, with her. Um, so... I don't know. I don't. I, it's not like I like her 100%, but I feel that she is like changing inside of me, you know, because for a very long time, I didn't get her relationship with Craig. You know, I didn't get her position on the show. She's on her bed like 24 seven, you know, but I think after last season, I think, I mean, the producers checked everyone, you know, they probably were like, Paige, you cannot stay in your bed all the time, every single day, like no more of that. And this season, she's literally bringing it. You know, so I'm kind of like surprised. You know, I love to be surprised uh, when it comes to Bravo celebrities that I do not connect. You know, so like let's see, let's see how that plays. All right, guys. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below about this one. Now, let's talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey because, girl, I have some tea for you after that experience explosive explosive um season premiere girl i think it was a very strong season premiere we get to see like everyone in action and we got to see our queen Teresa judice checking that rachel girl and the ninja turtle looking man you know she was like she ate and left no crumbs you know i love that for Teresa. i think even jennifer was like damn you know like she did not let any of these people bothering her but all not only that i think this they did such a good job on the season premiere 
because without saying it, we actually get to see how the relationships are shifting inside of the show. You know, we get to see uh, Jackie Goldschneider getting like a little bit, you know, annoyed with Margaret Josephs, which we know how that is going to end up. We got to see Jennifer Fessler being like, well, Teresa has been very nice to me, bitch. I am not going to dislike her because you dislike her. OK, which we know how that is going to end up as well. Uh, of course, the M&Ms, you know, the Margaret and Melissa Minions are still right there. And it, it was interesting. It was it was interesting to see how everything was moving on on the premiere. But now I got some tea from you from Danielle Cabral. Today is the day of the Daniels. Girl, do you guys remember that she has been accused of uh, not paying for a lot of shit during BravoCon and that she put her glam squad in this like random cheap hotel like an hour away from from where BravoCon was, she didn't pay for their Ubers. Like there was a lot of shit about Danielle not wanting to pay or not wanting to do right by her employees at BravoCon. Well, it doesn't end up there because the um, the stylist, uh, the ha the hairstylist, you know, and the stylist who uh, did everything for Danielle's look at the premiere of New Jersey is coming forward mm -hmm. and she's talking of how Danielle Cabral did not pay or has not paid for anything that she did for her during the whole season of The Real Housewife of New Jersey. Uh -huh. So this girl, her name is Karine Desimore, you know, and she posts a picture of Danielle wearing, you know, the, the yellow dress that she had, you know, with the hair and everything. And she says, stay tuned. I will be posting all her looks from season 14, even though Danielle never paid for this look. She did promise to promote and circulate all my work. Instead, she took me for a spin and decided to block me. I still feel it's only fair all my hard work be promoted as promised. What do you guys think is fair? Uh -huh. What is wrong with Danielle and paying for shit? I honestly believe that this could be one of the worst kind of people who wants to constantly be scamming people out of shit. Mm -hmm. I am to say that I am disappointed in Danielle is a big like a huge statement because last season when she came in, I was like this girl could be the future of New Jersey. You know, like she had like a lot of that New Jersey swag, you know, and like she, I I thought that she was going to be doing really good. And then all of this shit happened. She she turned on Jennifer and Teresa. She started not paying to people. She started doing all of these um, sketchy things. And now we have this. Girl, it's not that hard to pay people. You know, I don't know if she doesn't have the coins. I don't know where is she spending her bravo coins i don't know what is she doing but like what's fair is fair i honestly think that she should sue her and being like you need to do this you know so imagine so what i'm thinking is happening over here is that she contacted this girl probably and was like hey girl like do you want to like be promoted on this huge reality tv show you know you just have to do my hair for free she probably full of hope and happiness was like yes yes you know and she did all her her all her uh, makeup and everything during the whole season. And then this, this, this bee goes around and be like, block. Girl, I'm so sorry, but that is disgusting, you know? And let's say for the purpose of the experiment, let's say that maybe they had a fallout. You still promise to promote these looks that cost money, you know, so even if you had a problem with her, you still have a verbal contract because that's a verbal contract right there. So you know what, um, Corinne, you should sue because girl, get yours, get yours because this is not the first time 
that Danielle has been known of not wanting to pay people, all right? So be very careful with that, all right? <clears throat> so uh, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Now let's talk about Southern Charm. Where are my fans of Southern Charm out there? Girl, the new season cannot come fast enough. I think last season they did such a great job. I was a little bit worried with, you know, when they fired Catherine Dennis because she is really good reality TV. But I am, I was very pleasantly surprised with last season. It was really good. And now I have some tea for you about the upcoming season, okay? Uh, they are on production right now. And I'm sorry, guys. They are in production right now and they, uh, they're almost done filming, you know, and apparently there is going to be a lot of tensions between Austin Kroll and Craig Canaver. And this is going to come as a big surprise because, you know, they are BFF. So the fact that they two of them will possibly be beefing, it's a big thing. And apparently it's all about Paige the Sorvo. Look. I have to say something. I have never really understood completely the relationship of Paige and Craig. This season, I kind of like like them together a little bit more, you know, from what I saw on Summer House. But to me, that doesn't mean that I do know that I don't think they belong together. Okay. Craig Canover is ready for commitment. He is ready to have a family. He wants to get married. He wants to get kids. He wants to do the whole thing. He is ready now, you know. Paige is not even close to any of that. I don't know if you guys saw the after show <coughs> of uh, Summer House, but Paige is very much on her own shed. You know, she says that she will not uh, be done anything that she stole, that she has her own timeline that she doesn't care about anyone, that she doesn't care about Craig's timeline, that she will do whatever she considers is okay for her, which it's good for you, okay? Do you, boo, but when you are in a relationship, I think it's also, like, it is important not to lose yourself, but it's also important to make some kind of commitment, you know, so you find, you know, halfway. It cannot be like, oh, it's just what I want to, period, no, okay? Like, it, when you are in a relationship, it doesn't work like that. And I feel that they are not on the same page. So from what I heard, like, Austin, of course, is picking up on that. And maybe he wants Craig to just break with Paige because it doesn't make sense, the relationship that they have together. The problem is Craig is actually in love with Paige, you know, and he wants to make this work no matter what. But Paige will not move to New York I'm sorry, Paige will not move to Charleston and Craig will not move to New York. So how the F is this going to work? Okay. So I don't know if I might find myself because I love Craig. Like I love Craig. I think this, he, for me, he is one of my top Bravo celebrities out there. But I don't know if moving on to the next season, I'm going to have to be a little bit on Team Austin because it just doesn't make sense, the relationship between Craig and Paige. Now, I don't know if they are setting us up for the breakup because if you're watching summer house right now there is a lot of this conversation like what are you actually giving craig you know what are you like really want to be with him you know and and she has already mentioned like several times like well if it doesn't work out then let, let's just break up let's just walk away let's just do this you know and now that with southern charm i feel that we could be going to the direction of Craig and Paige finally uh, breaking up, you know, because honestly, if, if none of them wants to move out or do anything, like, how is this relationship going to gonna work, you know, and, and especially getting married and doing all of that, um, I don't know, you know, so let me know if you're going to be on Team Austin or Team Craig on the next season of um, Southern Charm, and apparently it goes... So far, that is being reported that on the, during this weekend, Craig had a full-on breakdown on Southern Charm. It breaks my heart. Like, I love Craig so much. Like, it, it really breaks my heart because he wants that happy ending. You know, he wants that uh, loving relationship. And I, I just, I don't feel that Paige 
is gonna give her that give him that you know uh it's going to be it's gonna suck because girl imagine having all of this time and then you have to start all over girl mm -mm. maybe craig needs to start like you know dating on another way <laughs> i'm just kidding anyways um yeah apparently taylor and green has not been performing at all and she might be even out of the show because she's like nowhere to be found okay and jt will be returning to the show and he has a new girlfriend and apparently he is going to be coming from madison's husband next season it's going to be interesting he this little short napoleon man girl he is fiery he is fire actually like him i actually like him i think he he has that fire that Catherine dennis used to have you know and he's not afraid of like getting down and dirty so let's see let's see how it's gonna happen so let me know what you guys think about all of this southern charm um situation going on on the comments below all right so let's talk about before we uh, finish here about the real housewife of orange county <coughs> girl you know the ladies they are done so they already wrapped the next season is set to be good dramatic explosive like whatever word that you might find you know they are saying that it's really 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 good uh but now we have a new statement because some of the ladies got together to celebrate uh mother's day girl every single housewife of orange county was there except for shannon bedore and Jennifer Petranti, which means that the group is divided right now. But it actually means that this could be the end of Shannon Bedore. And I am, I will be broken. I love Shannon Bedore, but I also love Tamara Judge, you know? So like, I don't know, but like, I love Shannon Bedore so much, but I feel that th this is not a good sign. Uh, literally on the picture that it was uh, posed by Tamara Judge, she says, celebrating Mother Day early with these amazing mothers. Thank you, Heather Dubrow, for always doing a great job at getting these girls together, you know? And everyone is there. Alexis Bellino, Heather Dubrow, Tamara Judge, Emily Simpson, Gina Kirshenheit, and the new housewife that I completely forgot the name right now. Um, but no Shannon Bedore, no Jennifer Pedranti. Girl. I mean, I know that Jennifer Pedranti actually got very close to Shannon Bedore this season. So it makes sense that they did not invite them here. But are they trying to ice them out? We're going to have to wait and see. But girl, especially Jennifer, Jen, be smart. Because Shannon, I have a big feeling that she might be on her way out. Which breaks my heart. Believe me, breaks my heart. But Jennifer needs to start you know align herself with some of the other ladies just just you know just a little advice so let's wait and see what is going to happen there uh let me know what you guys think in the comments below and if you are excited about this all right guys with that we are done with the bravo verse so let's close our portal but don't go anywhere because it is time to go down the pop culture streets